Good evening. I'm going to call this meeting of the Wendell Town Board to order. Welcome everyone for being with us tonight. We have a long meeting, so um, be patient. Hold on. A lot of things that we're going to cover. I want to take a moment to welcome two fifth graders from Carver Elementary School that are with us tonight to lead from the Pledge of Allegiance. They are Natalie Broadwell and Jaden Miller. Y'all can come up and step up to the podium where the microphone is and someone will pull it down a little bit for you. Natalie is a fifth grader at Carver Elementary School and she represents her class on the school students council and she works hard, makes good grades and is active on the softball, softball field year round. We're happy to have Natalie with us tonight. Jaden is a fifth grader at Carver Elementary School and he is a safety patrol member, goes above and beyond in the classroom and is a leader among his peers. In his spare time, he enjoys playing soccer. So we're happy to have you with us tonight, Jaden. So if you would like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You both for being with us tonight. It's a big deal that you got chosen by your principal to be here. So I'm real proud of you for both of that. Next, the invocation. Mr. Errol Briggerman from Wendell Baptist. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. I just pray. Lord, we just thank you for this country. We thank you, Lord, for this city lord we just thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us we just ask you lord as as we go through this evening lord that that all things will be settled in your in your in honoring you all things will will just be the best thing for this city we just ask you lord that you watch over us and you guide us and that you uh, continue to uh, to bless the city as you have we just so thankful lord for so many things that are that would have been accomplished this year. For all these things, we ask in your blessed name. Amen. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See, we have no one signed up for public comment tonight. Do have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Motion to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, item number four is the recognition of Carver Elementary School teacher Dana Hewlings. Do you want to come stand up here? Ms. Hewling has, has been teaching for 19 years. This is her 10th year at Carver Elementary. She has served as grade chair. She's on the leadership team at Carver. She's on the school improvement plan team, has been the discovery education lead, teacher leader, and is currently serving on, as a representative to the Bring Your Own Device program. I might need to take part of that. I always need help with mine. Uh, Ms. Hewlings is an exemplary teacher and leader for our school, and this year her peers chose her as Teacher of the Year for Carver Elementary, which is fantastic. Congratulations to being Teacher of the Year, and thank you for all the things you do for our kids here in Wendell. Thank you. Is there anything you wanted to say? It's just an honor to be recognized by my peers. Well, thank it, you. It is, and your principal chose you to be here tonight, so congratulations for that, and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item number five, presentation of the Town of Wendell 2016 audit report by Petway Mills and Pearson PA. Madam Mayor, members of the board, we have uh, our auditor here tonight, uh, Phyllis Pearson. She's with the audit firm of Petway Mills and Pearson. Um, she's going to present the 2016 audit report to us. 
Um, that period of coverage is from July 1, 2015 to June 30, 2016. So I'll let her do her presentation. All right. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you. We issued an unmodified audit opinion, which is the best audit opinion that auditors will give. It means that we found the financial statements to be fairly stated and to fairly present the financial position of the town in conformity with general accepted accounting principles. That is based on the, the test work we did um, of the underlying numbers in the financial <coughs> statements. We've also issued an unmodified audit opinion on an audit conducted under government auditing standards, meaning that we looked at your compliance with certain provisions of laws, regulations, grant agreements, and found that you complied with those requirements. The governmental activities, uh, which are the full accrual statements, you had total assets of $12 million, total liabilities $4.8 million, total net assets or net position, 7.3 million. You had in your general fund 4.5 million in cash. Your total full accrual revenues were 5.4 million. Your total expenditures 5.2 million. In your business type activities for the water fund, you had total assets of 210,000, total liabilities 210,000, uh, total revenues 11,000, and total expenditures 11,000. <coughs> In the water and sewer fund, you had $2.6 million in total assets, $2.6 million in total liabilities. Total revenues were $70,000 and total expenditures $70,000. The general fund, which is truly your only active fund, your total assets were $8.1 million. Total liabilities, $2.6 million. Deferred inflows, which is property taxes receivable of $55,000. Total fund balance is $5.4 million. These statements are modified accrual, and the reason there's a change between this balance sheet and the previous balance sheet is because we deduct fixed assets and long-term liabilities and certain pension transactions. You had total revenues of $5.3 million, total expenditures of $5.6 million. <coughs> Your actual fund balance, unassigned fund balance, was a little over $5 million. There's a statutory recommendation that you maintain 8% of your prior year expenditures in the fund balance. 8% would be $389,000. So um, in that sense, you meet and exceed those recommendations. Um, you do, should be aware in that five million, of that $5 million, $2.3 million is owed to the city of Raleigh. So that number dropped somewhat. If you were to look in the audit report on page 21, I call this to your attention because it shows that your net change in fund balance on the modified accrual basis is $461,000. The reason that is resulting that positive number of $674,000 is recorded as loan proceeds in a modified accrual statement and um, that distorts the total change in fund balance. You had a number of capital projects going on, capital improvements, if you will, and when you do that and you borrow finance through borrowing mo money, it will be a couple of years until that number adjusts just because of the math. So I wouldn't want you to think when you looked on page 21 that you had net income of 461000 because that's not true. There were no changes in your accounting policies. There will be changes in your accounting policies going forward in that um, the post-employment benefit requirements change in the next two years. So there will be prior year adjustments whenever you adapt new gas fees. There were no changes in your use of estimates. Your most sensitive disclosure dealt with capital assets and debt. Our adjustments were limited to the adjustments to convert books to the accrual basis of counting for something called the GASB 34 presentation. We had no disagreements with management. The management letter uh, representation letter was signed timely and promptly. The report was submitted timely to the LGC. It was actually submitted in September, which is uh, way ahead of the deadline. There were no uncorrected misstatements. 
And then one last comment, there's no budgetary overages. You appropriate funds and you provide management with instruction as, as to how expenditures show to occur and management followed your instructions so you don't have any statutory violations or material noncompliance in that sense. And thank you for the opportunity to conduct the audit and I'm open for questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Madam Mayor, we, um, we would ask that the board adopt the, um, by motion of uh, the audit report so we can have that on file. It does say that. Thank you. Okay, so I need a motion to adopt the audit report. I'll make a motion to adopt the 2016 audit report. We have a motion to adopt the 2016 audit report. All in favor? Uh -huh. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Item number 7A is a public hearing for annex annexation petition A1602 for 2.013 acres of property, excluding right of way, located at 5329. What? Skip six. <laughs> I'm sorry, I skipped right over. I've got that on my mind. Okay, I'm sorry. Item number six is presentation by Randall Billings on updates to the 2013 personnel policy. Yep. Madam Mayor. I'm just trying to keep things moving. We have a long three-page agenda right. tonight. Yeah, we do, we do. <laughs> Randy Billings is here, and he um, did our revised audit, uh, personnel policies back in 2013, so he's going to come and kind of give an update. Um, it is a living, breathing document, and it's been two or three years now since we've had a kind of an update, so he's going to go through some of the changes that we've noticed over the last couple of years. Thank you for being with us tonight. Well, I thank you, and I am on myself. notice. <laughs> and it is significant while you're here. I appreciate it. I don't know why I marked you out. So that is perfectly fine. I'm just trying to jump ahead. Go ahead. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, I'm Randy Billings. Uh, as Butch said, I am, a, I am a local government management and human resources consultant from Greensboro. Um, in 2013, I appeared before this board and presented a position classification and pay plan, which was adopted, and then a few months later, we presented um, a fairly significant revision of your personnel policies. Um, I am here tonight um, to communicate to you what I consider to be some minor tweaks. You know, there are changes, there are tweaks, and then I'm going to con consider this to be fairly minor tweaks. It's a result of my interaction with staff and getting their input on what is actually happening in, in current practice and issues that they have run into since 2013. And I will encourage the manager and Butch as well to weigh in on these. Uh, you have in your possession uh, a summary. It's about five pages of the changes that are proposed. Let me call your attention on the first page to a policy that has already been changed by you. It was the desire of staff to bring this forward just as a reminder that in July that you have already changed the Christmas schedule holiday to coincide with that of North Carolina state government. So that is just a uh, a refresher of, uh, to refresh your, your mind that uh, that has already been proved. On page two, um, I'm going to take um, Article 3, Section 9, and Section 10 together because they are essentially the same thing. One deals with non-exempt people, and that means they are not exempt from the Fair Labor Standards Act, and they have certain requirements that you have to follow. And the other deals with exempt personnel. All this change does is simply say you must use all of your vacation and all of your, uh, excuse me, uh, you must use your comp time before you use your vacation and your sick leave. We already required that to be the case for vacation. We did not require it for sick leave. This adds in sick leave. Is that clear? On page three, What, what this does is it makes basically two, two clarifications. One, and, and, and let, me, let me say that when you had policies approved in 1999, 
part-time people were not included and were not eligible for longevity pay. Somewhere in the intervening years before 2013, you included part-time people. We brought that policy forward in 2013. That was not a policy change. It was already in place. It has not been the practice of this community to recognize part-time service for longevity. What this policy, do, this policy change does, it clarifies that very thing, that um, part-time service is not eligible for longevity and only full-time continuous service counts as qualification toward years of service for purposes of determining longevity pay. Do you understand? Is that clear? Yeah. Under Article 1, Section 11, we realized after operating under these policies for a few years that we did not define immediate family for purposes of bereavement leave. We do define it in two other cases, for sick leave and for uh, employment. We define immediate family. We had not defined it for bereavement leave. Now, bereavement leave is three days of leave for people uh, who experience a loss uh, of um, a death in the, the family. So we have defined family for the purposes of bereavement leave. And uh, it is immediate family includes spouse, parents, children, and a life partner. We have simply changed the definition of live-in relationships to life partner. So that is the only, only change there. Um, the other change, Article 7, Section 7, Section 7 the vacation accrual rate, um, simply changing it from um, months of service to hours of service. Um, I mean, excuse me, days. We were giving days, and the staff feels like it is more appropriate to do it in terms of hours. No change in the overall policy. It's just defining it differently. And then the last one is travel by personal auto. We are clarifying that policy to say that if you choose to drive your vehicle and a town vehicle is available, you will not be reimbursed for mileage. You will be reimbursed for mileage in circumstances in which um, you must take travel and there is not a car available. Then you would be reimbursed at the standard rate. Um, but the, the policy change here is that if you choose to use your own vehicle, you choose not to take an available town vehicle, then there is no reimbursement uh, that will be forthcoming. Um, those are the major changes. Um, as I said, I consider these to be fairly minor tweaks to the personnel policies. Um, the staff has recommended that these, this be put on the consent agenda for November the 28th. Um, it is your pleasure, obviously your pleasure, about how you handle this. If you want to take action tonight, or if you want to accept staff recommendation to put it on the consent agenda for November 28. Uh, I am available to answer any questions that you might have, as I'm sure the staff would be willing to, to weigh in on this also. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Billings? Um, under bereavement leave, the 24 consecutive hours is 24 consecutive working hours. So that would, it would still be yes. three working days for an office employee and two shift days for a police officer. That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Any other questions? Uh, Article 1, Section 11. Is there a, I'm assuming there's an attorney somewhere that said that that's a change you need to make? Other live-in relationships versus life partner? Could you repeat that? It's under bereavement leave. Uh, so you struck other living relationships and added life partner, or did you, well, or you strike other living relationships? The way the current policy reads is is it's for 
live-in relationships. The feeling was that that could be misinterpreted. Uh, a live-in relationship could also be interpreted as a renter. Um, and we just wanted to be more clear. Um, I mean, the overall intent of the policy did not change, but is more a life partner than it is simply somebody living in the household. Any other questions for Mr. Billing? We need to get this placed on the November 28th agenda for action. Do we need that in the form of a motion? Okay. We have a motion to place this on the November 28th agenda for action. So moved. Okay, so we have a motion to place the personnel policies on the November 28th agenda for action. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. All right now we're on night, uh, item 7A. Public hearing for annexation petition A1602 for 2.013 acres of property located at 5329 Rollsville Road and identified as a portion of pin number 17742970076. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members of the board, uh, as stated uh, tonight, we're here to discuss an annexation petition for about two acres that's uh, just north of the credit union site on Rollsville Road. Um, the action we're being asked to, uh, you're being asked to take would consist of adopting the uh, annexation ordinance that you have included as an attachment to your report. So the applicant in this case is David Royster of, uh, on behalf of Capital Funds Incorporated. Uh, Wake County ABC, which has this property under contract, has also signed the petition at the time. We didn't know when that change in ownership could occur. Um, so this land represents a portion of a larger 50-acre parcel identified by the aforementioned uh, pin, pin number. Uh, it's currently vacant. Applicants seeking to repair this property for development uh, as an ABC store. Um, and they've also submitted a, a rezoning request because uh, currently this is under Wake County's jurisdiction, of course. The town clerk has certified the sufficiency of the petition and has also submitted a copy of the annexation plat to be signed and recorded. Um, no additional material was required prior to this hearing being held. Uh, on your screen there you show uh, kind of in the, the blue line creating the dividing point uh, for um, the area that would be annexed. <coughs> so that area highlighted uh, south of the blue line is the area under consideration. Uh, currently this is zoned under the county as a their version of a highway commercial. Um, the applicant has also uh, submitted a rezoning petition that you'll be hearing tonight as well. Um, so if the annexation petition is uh, approved, then uh, we'd go forward with looking at a Wendell rezoning petition. Currently, uh, this entire parcel is undeveloped, valued at a little over $10 million uh, or $200,000 an acre roughly. Uh, at the current property rate, the uh, annexation of this property undeveloped would be about $2,000 in increased tax revenue. Uh, if it is developed as an ABC store, it would be considered tax exempt. Uh, however, this could, um, staff believes this would likely spur additional commercial development in this area. Um, so that's what I have for you tonight. Uh, we do have, uh, actually the, the applicant, David Royster, is not present today. We do have a, someone that's here to speak if needed on, on behalf of ABC when we get to the rezoning. Okay. So I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Bergmar? Okay. None? Okay. Public hearing is now open. Anyone wishes to speak for or against this project? Step forward. Tell us your name and yeah. address. Thank you. Uh, Kelvin Lucas. Uh, good evening to everyone. Good evening. Uh, I wanted to come on this evening and ask, well, speak to the board <coughs> in reference to the ABC store project. And as a parent, I have two kids who attend East Wake uh, High School. And so my question is, has there ever been any consideration around possibly uh, finding some type of eating establishment to incorporate into that particular area that would be of benefit to the high school community. 
I know currently right now, uh, they, the closest eating establishment would be the Sheets uh, gas station. But has there ever been any type of consideration given to possibly invite uh, some type of fast food restaurant to come in to help <clears throat> be a, a support to the high school community that I think would benefit uh, the students and the East Wake High School community at large. Uh, I had re read the article about the ABC store in the paper and the uh, proposed success or the projected success that it's going to have, but I was just wondering if there had been any uh, talk in the past about trying to build up that commercial real estate to help uh, benefit the East Wake High School students and faculty uh, at the, you know, for, for that particular area in the, in the town. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? Evening, Madam Mayor and, and Board of Commissioners. Uh, I just wanted to maybe, as a longtime resident and past mayor, let you know that at one time Wendell had an ABC store, and um, through the years it, we lost it because of the fact of the volume of business is what they said the problem was. The problem was really it was politics, uh, and we lost our ABC store, and we haven't had one since. We're the only town in Wake County that doesn't have an ABC store. Um, this location, I think, is a great location. Um, it uh, lends itself to future development in that area, and usually ABC stores do actually create other developments around those stores. So they, they do a lot of research in picking their sites, and so I think that uh, they're picking that site speaks well, and it speaks well for Wendell, and I think this is another piece of that puzzle that we want to have to have a complete community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Public hearing is now closed. I need a motion to... I wish you pleasure, gentlemen. What do you want to do? Make comments and have a motion. Sure. And I uh, appreciate everyone being here tonight. Um, yeah. And both gentlemen spoke to speak to the development and, and getting other things in. Um, I can assure you that one, there's a lot of commercial lots out there that people would like to have developed. Uh, and, I, and I believe it's coming. Uh, unfortunately, and this is more to address the question, we get a lot. Unfortunately, we get no say-so in that. Uh, we can ask, we can uh, become inviting, we can do what we can, but we can't, you know, we don't get to make a decision between Project A and Project B. Uh, so my hope is that the staff's opinion on this is correct and that that spurs some of the growth that, you know, I think we're all looking for uh, to support that end of town. Uh, and with that, Madam Mayor, motion to approve. I'm just going to add one more thing, too, before I... Uh, our Economic Development Committee has sent out probably maybe hundreds, uh, maybe not quite that many, of letters. We've been approaching people. We've been making contact and communicating with people to get businesses, particularly restaurants, to Wendell. And they're going to come. But, you know, our, our job here isn't when a developer comes and they want to put something on their land, as long as it's not something we prohibit, we don't get to pick and choose. So. Um, I'd invite you and some friends and all to <laughs> open a restaurant. <laughs> you know, we need that. We need them very badly. So, and, and I understand where you're coming from. I really do. Thank you. So we have a motion to uh, adopt the attached. Is that what, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I, I would also like to speak to the gentleman's concerns. I, <clears throat> when I went to East Wake High School, um, we didn't even have off-campus lunch because there was no sheets. There was nowhere. The nearest was Bojangles or Aubrey's. Um, and the, the rumor was, um, um, oh, what is it? What's the country store? The, uh, Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel. 
Uh, when I was in high school, the rumor was there was going to be a Cracker Barrel and the Super Walmart. Well, the Super Walmart went to Zebulon. I'm not exactly sure why. And I don't know whatever happened to the Cracker Barrel. Um, um, we did not run the Cracker Barrel we didn't, off. We didn't run them off. I don't want to stress that. that out nor, there. nor the Walmart. Um, I, I agree. Uh, it's lunch can be crowded at East Wake. I know with the new uh, cafeteria that's been built since I've been gone, um, it, it's, it was doing a lot better. But um, uh, just to piggyback off of, of what's already been said, we, we do everything we can to try to attract visits around here because Wendell needs it. And, um, and we, we appreciate your comments towards that. Okay. So anyone else? Right, we have a, a motion to adopt the attached annexation ordinance. Anybody have any comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. <laughs> Item 7B, the public hearing for a zoning request for Wake County ABC to rezone 2.013 acres of land excluding right of way located at 5329 Rollsville Road from conditional use highway commercial, which is a Wake County designation, to Wendell designation highway commercial. I believe I got all that correct. Yes. Okay. Although you notice that, ignore the title where it says 21 acres on there. It is two, <laughs> same piece of property, 2.013 <laughs> acres. Um, so this is the rezoning request for the same piece that was just uh, voted on to approve the annexation. Uh, in this case, the applicant is the Wake County ABC, uh, and uh, he's looking to annex this into. Now that it's been, sorry, now that it's been annexed in, uh, we have to apply a Wendell zoning designation to it uh, because it was under Wake County's designation. Um, as previously stated, this is just north of the Credit Union. Um, I already said that. Uh, they have provided within their request a, a justification. I won't read all of it, but. Uh, essentially, it says that it's their belief that the rezoning of this to uh, highway commercial is uh, consistent with our plan and that uh, it will not adversely impact our uh, utilities, public safety, streets, et cetera, and so forth. Um, and that this you know, will allow us to have some influence on the future growth in this area and have a positive impact. Um, the requested designation of highway commercial is comparable to the current county designation. It's also consistent with all the adjacent Wendell properties that are already within our um, zoning jurisdiction to the east, west, and south. Um, the majority of this property does fall within our gateway overlay zoning district. Um, this overlay applies some additional development standards related to parking, building setbacks, and buffering, but doesn't impact uh, permitted uses. Uh, I would note that uh, <coughs> if, a, if the board is looking to approve this request to please consider all permitted uses. I know we've talked about ABC, but any time we're rezoning a piece of property, you need to look at everything that would be permitted within the, um, the highway commercial zoning district. You have that, uh, those uses that are allowed in that district included as an attachment to the report as attachment A. Again, just a map showing the, the property under consideration and that pinkish color that it's surrounded by uh, is our current uh, highway commercial zoning district for Wendell. Uh, another thing we look at whenever we're rezoning is what our comprehensive plan says for the area. It breaks it up into a series of sectors uh, being intended for more conservation and the other direction intended for more intense growth. This falls within the S5 intended growth area, so it's only uh, second to the highest in terms of uh, the intensity of growth that this area is intended for. Uh, the comprehensive plan states that the S5 sector is generally within a half mile of high capacity regional thoroughfares and that in appropriate development types or higher density mixed use centers of employment, uh, commerce, and residential uses. And it has a host of uh, appropriate uses included within it, uh, ranging from residential to uh, commercial uses, civic, and even industrial uses within this sector. It also falls within a, a village or town center, essentially just nodes of more concentrated developments uh, that often center around some of our major intersections. At the October 17th planning board meeting, the planning board did vote unanimously, a seven to zero in favor of the requested uh, zoning amendment. Um, and as part of that, they did find it to the uh, request to be consistent with the develop recommended uses and development types outlined in the comprehensive plan for the S5 sector and reasonable due to its location 
along two thoroughfares, uh, as well as the adjacency of the existing commercial highway zoning districts. And staff is in favor of this request as well. Uh, we do have the applicant here tonight, um, and I'd be happy to take any questions you may have as well. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Bergmark? Public hearing is now open. If anyone wishes to speak <coughs> for or against, please come forward. Okay. Public hearing is closed. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning request um, at 5329 Rolls Road from CUHC to Highway Commercial. And adopt the ordinance. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, we have a motion to adopt the ordinance and approve the rezoning request. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Uh, All right. Thank you. Item 7C, public hearing for annexation petition A1603 for 16.09 acres of property located on Window Boulevard and identified by PIN number 1784263321 and PIN number 1784268911. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Um, it's probably the first time we've had two annexation petitions on the same night. I know. Um, what's going on here? <laughs> So again, this is, as, as you just stated, uh, this annexation petition or this request is for six, just over 16 acres, uh, identified by two PIN numbers. Uh, if you recall, the conditional district request that this board heard for chart house holdings, this is the same property that that conditional district request um, applied to. Uh, so tonight we are asking you to hold a public hearing and consider taking action. That action would consist of adopting the attached ordinance for annexation. Um, Brian D. Uh, Gower is the president of Chart House Holdings LLC. He submitted this request uh, for, again, 16 acres of land located just behind Knott Square, well, behind and beside uh, the Knott Square Shopping Center. Uh, this property is currently vacant. The applicant is preparing uh, or seeking to prepare this property for development as commercial as well as some light uh, industrial sites. Uh, the clerk has certified this, the petition, uh, and they have su uh, submitted a copy of an annexation plat. This property was rezoned earlier this year as for the conditional district with commercial uses along Wendell Boulevard and then the industrial or manufacturing uses uh, on the larger portion of the site behind Knott Square. Um, currently, this property is undeveloped and valued at a little over $600,000 by Wake County Tax Assessor. Uh, prior to the development, this would generate just under $3,000 of annual property taxes for the town uh, if annexed. Uh, Post-development value would, of course, depend upon what type of uh, development occurred there, the, the level of investment that would occur there. Uh, the applicant has submitted a final development plan for the 4.43 acres of the petitioned area. So in the conditional district, it broke it up into lot one, lot two, lot three, lot four. Um, lot one was that 4.4 acres. Uh, and so after you all approve the master plan, the next stage is the final development plan, which is essentially construction documents for, uh, for the development. Uh, for the purpose of constructing a 18,000 square foot industrial office building to house AAA louvers. Um, that's the information I have for you tonight relevant to this, and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Bergmark? Public hearing is now open. If anyone wishes to speak for or against, the annexation petition can step forward. All right. Public hearing is closed. What's y'all? I'll make a motion to approve the annexation request um, for 16.09 acres of properties located on Window Boulevard. Adopt the attachment. Adopt the attachment. Yeah. Adopt the ordinance, please. Okay. Right, we have a motion to adopt the annexation ordinance for annex uh, property. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, 
item number 7D, public hearing to consider request by AAA Louvers Incorporated to receive economic development incentives for 4.48 acres of property within the parcel um, identified by pin number 17842668911 and uh, addressed as Zero Window Boulevard. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the board. The uh, Window Planning Department received an application by AAA Louvers for the large business incentive policy by uh, Wayne Gower, who's president of AAA Louvers. Uh, he's here tonight and uh, is available for questions if there's any um, for him later. The town first adopted its economic development incentive back in 2009 and later amended it in 2013. The policy is broken up in two categories, one being the small business incentive grant and the other the large business. The large business grant, which AAA Louvers has applied for, is a grant equivalent of 75% of the town's local property tax assessment on the new investment for each year over a total of five year period. The, in order to be eligible, the taxable value of any building improvement must, must be at least $1 million and the business must either employ, uh, must employ 15 or more employees or have a gross sales of over $1 million. Per the adopted policy, the town board has the authority to approve any type of incentive grant as long as it's no more than that 75% of the assessed building value over five years um, or 75% over a lesser time or they, you guys could adopt a step down approach over each year. You pretty much have whatever discretion as long as you don't go over that 75% and five years. AAA Louvers is currently located off of Siemens Road which is not in the corporate limits of Wendell. They are a wholesale manufacturing company that primarily manufactures exterior millwork for new housing and other developments. Their product lines include PVC and wood louvers, crawl space doors, porch columns, and mailbox or lamp posts. During the fiscal year of 2015, they had a sales total of $1.3 million. They've operated uh, from 1995 to 2007 in a 5,000 square foot building, and they use another 4,000 square foot uh, building in an adjacent space. In 2007, they rented an additional 2,500 square feet located down the road from their other locations. Chart House Holdings LLC purchased the property uh, on August 21st of this year. Since purchasing that property, they have been working to develop three industrial lots and two commercial lots. The master development plan for their proposed conditional district was approved in May. A final development plan has been reviewed for lot one for Chart House Industrial Park, which will be the new location of AAA Louvers. This facility consists of 18,000 square feet for office and industrial purposes and a storage yard. The applicant expects the building to be complete and fully operational in the fall of 2017. The requested incentive grant only applies to lot one of the development. If the building's assessed value were to be exactly $1 million, which is the minimum required, the town taxes on that improvement would be about $4,900 would be $4,900 annually. Over a five-year period, that would equate to $24,500 in local taxes paid to the town. If the town were to grant the full amount of 75% of taxes over five years, you're looking at $3,675 annually or a total of just over $18,000 over that five-year period. This would provide the town with an additional uh, $1,225 in taxes per year or a total of a little over $6,000 for the next five years. AAA Louvers currently has 13 full-time employees. They have indicated that they plan to add between two and five employees within the next, within 18 months of moving into their new facility. Uh, staff has re re reviewed the incentive policy provided by, or the application and deemed it complete. If the town does approve a grant, the applicant shall be required to execute a legally binding agreement with the town that outlines the amount and terms of the grant, the specific investment amount and jobs creation goals created by the grantee and other agreed terms and conditions. The town is being asked to, to review, the, uh, approve, re review the request and approve any uh, stated conditions if the grant is approved. The town board may deny the request outright. You could approve the full amount. You could reduce it by a certain percentage or a certain time period. The town board also has the option of granting uh, or attaching conditions at the discretion which might deal with items such as number of number or salary of jobs provided as part of this project. Any conditions attached would be within the legally binding document drafted by the applicant and reviewed by the town attorney. Uh, and I, I will state that the working budget for this building 
is at nine hundred thousand dollars and many times the Wake County will assess higher than what the uh, cost is of building the building so if the assessment were to come back lower than the minimum one hundred or one million dollar threshold then essentially what what was agreed upon tonight would become a uh, void anyone have any questions for Mr. Reedy? <clears throat> um, even if we don't add anything here tonight, under the basic framework in the legally binding agreement, there would be for the assessed valuation and the number of employees in the specified number of years. Yes. Okay. That, in general, that would be okay. whatever the, if it was the full five you agreed upon, if it was two years, whatever case that might be. Okay. Do we have, this is the first time we've Yes, this is the, we've, we used the uh, small incentive grant for Dr. Vardy's site, which is right next door actually, and this is the first large incentive. So do we have a process in place where we, and not about them, but just because this is the first time we've done it, that we verify this information before we um, would reimburse those funds? We yes. verify the number so of So the way that is, is set up, so they pay the full county and town taxes. Right. We check what the assessed value is, and then it's a reimbursement the next that next year okay. of of the amount that they paid. What about the number of employees? Uh, if if you wanted to con act, attach conditions based on you know them adding those two to five well, it is extra in our employees, policy that you're supposed to do that. So well, that's what I just asked. That. That. I, that's in the basic framework. Would be the minimum of 15 employees, right? Well, it's 15 employees or, or one million, million in sales. sales. It's, it's, oh, I thought it was both. Yeah, no, or. it's an or. Mm -hmm. The way that the policy currently is, so um, you could they're over the one million in sales for the past year. So if you well, wanted to one million there, okay. Yeah, one million in assessed improvements to the property. Well, so there's there's two things. There's there's you have to qualify as a large business, yes. which is 15 employees or one million dollars in sales. Mm -hmm. So they had the 1.5 million last year. So they qualify as a large business instead of a small business. And then to get the grant, they have to have a minimum of one million dollars assessed building value. Right. So gotcha do now. we have a process in place where we verify the all those things before yes. we would? Yes. Once they the pay the taxes, they actually submit a request to the town to be reimbursed. Okay. And at that time, we would um, verify that they paid their taxes, that you know the assessed value is at least the $1 million minimum. And the sales or the employees? Yes, if that was attached as conditions. Okay. Well, the, the sales is already, you know, right. they, they've already locked that part in. But, so. but I'm just saying for the future. Yes. I'm just trying to yes. take these people out of it to make yes. sure because this is the first time we've had one. Yeah, and sure. staff does see some areas where we could improve the policy to make it more competitive for the town for things like restaurants, and we expect to bring a draft policy before you guys probably in January. But definitely. First meeting. Can we do it first meeting in January? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, right. I just, I've got a question that, so we're making a, a judgment that the construction budget is $900,000. Um, and I know we're going to attach a percentage of that or a percentage to that. Um, my concern is you guys have given us the absolute low ball. Um, I would love for them to hit a windfall and I'd love for them to build a beautiful building, but I don't want to tie a percentage to it before I know what that windfall or that beautiful building cost, um, or at least an idea of where we think we're going to land. Mm -hmm. I mean, because this is just a million dollars. You've given us the absolute lowest we could pay, correct? Yes. Um, and, you know, they, they've, they've been going through their, you know, construction estimates, and uh, Mr. Gower's brother, actually, I believe, is going to be doing the construction here on the construction company. Is that so I, I guess they feel pretty comfortable about their $900,000 working budget. I mean, okay. Obviously, things can go over budget, so um, it is I mean, all we contingent. We have plans that have been submitted based on that budget. Yes. I guess that's my question. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's all contingent on at least reaching that million dollar assessed value, and we've made them aware that you know if they don't reach it, it just you know the grant that if you guys approve something that could go away. Okay. Any more questions? Public hearing is now open. If anyone wishes to speak for or against the.
Economic Development Incentive Package. Step forward. Number one. Okay. Public hearings closed. Gentlemen. Uh, I'll make a motion that we grant the full 75% contingent on the one million in assessed value improvement. The also the one million in sales and meeting the minimum of 15 employees. Uh, not, or. not or. Uh, the applicant's already said he plans on hiring more, and I feel a lot more comfortable if it means more jobs coming to Wendell. So if we can get an and instead of an or there, um, I'll make that motion for the full. Any discussion on the motion? Commissioner mm. Joyner? I do have one clarification based on the motion. Would that running clock start basically once the building is, they have five years and they don't get any grant until they get to the 15 employees or once they get 15 employees, then the five year window starts? Whatever the pleasure is, just so we know what to work this off of. This is the kind of thing I was asking about when I said, do we have a process in place? <laughs> and I, I think the answer might be no. I mean, for it, there I'm is a lot of you, discretion up, saying, yeah, left up to the board. Area. So um, stuff we need to hash out. You know, you, you could say it starts when they get assessed the first time, and they have five years. And if they wait three years to get those two additional employees, then they really only get two years of grant. Or you could say, well, once they get those two additional employees, then they have five years. It's definitely whatever your pleasure is. Well, I think on from my standpoint, I, I feel like if these are the requirements that we set forth, they should all be in place. But if he's not ready to hire immediately, I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's fair. I, I, I would know, say, I then, see what I'm saying? I, I understand. Um, I'm, I'm fine with meeting in the middle of two and a half years. If, if they don't have it within, or that you want to keep it a whole year, make it a lot easier. easier. Um, let's do three years. And as long as they meet all those requirements within three years, then then we'll give them the the, the five starting then. But if they don't, then it's null and void. I mean, I think this all seems real kind of just, just too fluid. Um, I mean, even the even this pol even just this grant itself. I just I don't like the fact that we're sitting here deciding on 50, 50 or seventy five or three mm -hmm. or five or yes or no. I, I'd I'd much rather be voting on something that was here was the grant proposal. Are we going to say yes or no? Kind of like we have our facade grant. Um, uh, I agree. Um, I, I, I'm I'm the standpoint that if we're if we're going to put that contingency on it, then before I would give any grant money, and they would need to have all the um, all the things met. Um, and make uh, application once they have met the. Well, th th that would be my my standpoint uh, or my thought as well too. Um, I mean, if, if, if we don't want to have a contingency on it, that's fine as well, too. But I, I think if we're going to put that on there, then they need to have that met before we, before we start handing grant money over to them. I, um, I agree completely. Yeah. I mean, we're just trying to come up with, do they have five years to meet all those conditions? Well, and I, for, I think they should meet the conditions. I would say if, if we're going to put it in there, then they should have 15 employees. Um, yeah, I mean, before, starting, starting 15 beginning. employees. That would be my, my, my thought on it. If we're going to put that in there. If, if that's what y'all want to do. Hmm. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of 75% number. I'd love it if the applicant has any. I feel like we're negotiating without two sides here. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, Um, well, I won't have 15 employees to start with. Probably take a few months before we, or maybe even a year before we get moved in, get settled, get new product lines going. So it'll be, it'll be a little while before we have uh, three more employees, or two more. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying is the three okay. is, we'll put this in place, and as long as they meet all the requirements within three years, if they meet it within three years, then they get their five years. Not the remaining two, but the five. Let's start the clock. That three we years. start the clock when they meet all of the requirements, yes. Okay. 
And then, so at that point, then you give them the full 75% for the next five years. Yes. Do they have a certain time <clears> they have to meet it by? Three I mean, I know you say a couple months, but. Three years. Okay. Commissioner Joyner, you said something about the 75? Yeah, and so Commissioner Boyette and I are going to be talking about this in July. Um, so I, I'm just. I appreciate it, and, and I would say to you, I greatly appreciate you bringing your business here. There's nothing more than I want to see than people building businesses here, and we look forward to the rest of that complex getting built out. I think it's going to be great for Wendell, uh, and, I, and I know the product, product you sell and the quality of your work, you're going to have more employees, you're going to do more business, uh, and, I, and I hope to see that you know you hit the $2 million mark in the next couple of years. And I, from my understanding, that's not that's probably within your projections. Yeah. Um, that said, we got to be good managers of the taxpayers' money. Um, you know, I'd be more than happy to say, with Commissioner Boyette's conditions that he's worked out there, and just I was at 40, but if the rest of the board's at 50, I'm fine with 50. But uh, you know, I was going to split it in the middle. Um, but if 50 is the number that makes everyone else feel good, then that's you know, I'm comfortable with that. Um, you know, with the understanding that. We want you here, and we want to do what we can to help you. Um, you willing to modify your motion to speak I, to 75? If, if it's what it takes to get it passed, then yes, I will modify my motion. The only comment I'll make is this is this is the lowest monetary amount to to qualify for the big to get the big you know incentive break, and I just feel it's disingenuous to dangle a number like 75 percent out there and then not give it. And if this policy needs modification, then I'm fine with modifying it in the future so that it, it says 50 or 40 or whatever number this board feels comfortable with. Because yeah. this policy was passed before almost any of us were here. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, and so, uh, if you know, if we need to take a look at this policy, that's fine. I just, um, you know, the applicant applied it with the faith that it could be, you know, it was up to 75 percent, and it was it clearly stated that it could be anything from from denied to 75 percent but I feel like if, if we're going to say that 75 percent is an option and we're not willing to do it on the the lowest qualifying project I don't know when we would and I would say that we definitely need to modify this then um, so I with that said I'll modify my motion um, I move to apply the tax rebate grant for the amount of 50 percent with the conditions that there's at least one million in taxable improvements, there's one million in sales per year, and a minimum of 15 employees, and the applicant has three years to meet those requirements. And once they're met, then they will have five years of tax deferment. Is that right? Well, the only clarification I would ask is it's five consecutive years. Five consecutive years. Okay. All right. We have a motion on the table. For clarification, this was adopted by the town board August 12, 2013. So you were the only one. You weren't here in 13? 14, 15, 16. Next okay. year's my last okay. bar and parole. Over the wire. <laughs> yeah. Nice try, though, Mayor. No, no. I was just for everybody. No. All right. Do we have a motion on the table? All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. I hope y'all got it. I didn't receive the motion. And, and I would welcome many of the commissioners to uh, give us your feedback on the policy if you have any ideas that we you know, spend the next month crafting this. So uh, appreciate any feedback we get. Item number eight, discussion and action on the arterial and collector street plan. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Um, this item has been brought before the board numerous times. Um, and at, a month ago, uh, when we had this item come back up, uh, the board directed the town staff to give them a little more time for uh, continued review um, any, and to have discussions with either concerned parties or the engineer or staff. Uh, so we've now hit that deadline back again, um, and 
for, so we're just bringing this item back before you. Staff was not directed to make any specific changes. Uh, so it's really, I'm just here to answer any questions you may have or take further direction from the board. Do y'all have any questions, Mr. Burmark? Um, Mr. Burmark and I talked about this uh, early last week or the week before. Um, and I, I don't think it's any secret that um, this project is something that really got me interested in town government. Um, and specifically the um, family <coughs> subdivision provision. Um, and uh, talking with some affected residents, um, we sort of came up with uh, the idea that the, basically the spirit of this is that developers who were building need to put in the, you know, the road and infrastructure improvements that are needed to service their projects. At the same time, we didn't want to overburden people who own, you know, family farms or, or you know, uh, tracts of land who just want to use it for personal use, uh, you know, allow their kids to build a house or something out there. We didn't want to put these sort of, you know, massive road improvements, you know, for them to build one house. Um, and so, basically, the uh, make sure I'm calling it the right thing. It's the family subdivision exemption. Um, uh, would allow that, you know, as long as it's in the family, then, you know, you're exempt from, from these upgrades. Um, the, 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 the problem with that might be that if the way it's written, if, if I own a piece of farmland and I allow my child to build a house and then they live there for 30 years, they're exempt from building the infrastructure, but if they ever want to sell it, then that's going to be looming over them, the, those improvements. Um, and I feel like, you know, they've met the spirit of, of, um, of this policy that, you know, it stayed in the family and that improvement wasn't for commercial gain. And so uh, my proposal is that we add a, a sunset provision under uh, number two, conveyance, um, such that as, as long as any improvement um, or any transfer of land from the grantee to a non-lineal family member within a 10-year 10 10 year period from the approval date of the family subdivision, um, they would not be required to um, do the upgrades after that point. So basically, if you own a farm, your child builds a house on that farm, and they live in it for 10 years, you're back to zero, and there's no requirement on you anymore. Um, if you build a house, your kid lives in it for six months, and then you decide to sell it, you're still going to be, you're still going to have to do the improvements. I, th I think that sunset provision is another protection for people uh, that have family farms and, and want to allow their family to build on it. I think it's common sense, and I think it also keeps from dragging up things from 20 and 30 year old deed provisions in the future from saying, well, you have to build this road and, and that road and everything else. I think it's just common sense, I, and, and I hope the rest of the board sees it about the same way. Uh, that's the only ad adjustment to this proposal that I would have. Any other comments? Do you have that in writing? Have you, have you written that down? Uh, it should be the red part. But here, you can have mine. <laughs> yeah, never mind. That's fine. Thank you, Dick. I'm sorry. I just want to read all that real quick. You got one for the lawyer. It's, it should be spelled out. Is it, is it spelled out what counts as, because e even without the sunset provision, there has to be some way to delineate what counts as family or lineal and what does not. Yes? Yes. Um, We're talking live-in relationships or life partners? Let me get back to that section. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, well, it, w <clears throat> it would have to be spelled out even if you just wanted the family subdivision. Even if you didn't want the sunset provision, that would have to be spelled out somewhere. We're done. <coughs> I'm not seeing it directly within here, although that could be because there is a uh, an actual just 
uh, legal standard for what qualifies as that. I, I don't know 100%. Do you happen to know, Jim, if there's a, a, a general legal standard for what counts as uh, uh, a lineal family member? I don't know that there's a legal definition of it. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, something you can figure out. I know we have language in other sections of a code that, that speaks to that. We could, we could draft something, but I don't know that it's in this policy. It generally goes down to grandchildren, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I think normally it's yeah, parent. Uh, you know, there's there's you know basically three three generations of a a parent, the member, the the children, grandchildren. Um, like I said, we can we can include that language within this to just be clarified within the family subdivision provision itself to know it's not your second cousin twice removed right. that we're talking about. I'm fine with that. Okay. Clarification on what counts as lineal family member. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. Questions, comments? Oh, I would also add that uh, at our last meeting a month ago, there was some language that the attorney provided was speaking to kind of more of the uh, nature of the plan that there are some aspects of this that are still conceptual in nature. It was read aloud and the board agreed with it. So just if the board does take action tonight, that, that that would still be carried through as part of that approval for that language to be included within the transportation plan. Does that need to be part of the motion? Yes. Um, we may need to uh, clarify that again, Mr. Remarks. So we make sure we include everything we need to in the motion. I'm trying to think of the best way to clarify it. Um, to include the, uh, what was the date of our meeting one month ago? I have ago? the language, David, if that would help. That would help greatly. Thank you. The language uh, recommended was as follows. The specific roadway network established by the transportation plan is conceptual in nature. Final location and design capacity of roads will be determined as development occurs. The transportation plan is designed to aid the town in its review and consideration of development plans by establishing infrastructure improvement requirements and road cross sections, but final requirements will be determined at the time a development is proposed, taking into consideration the impact of the development. I'll make a motion to approve the transportation plan, uh, including the language just read by the town attorney um, and the um, provision or clause uh, that Commissioner Boyette stated early regarding the uh, transfer of land to a uh, linear family member. Is that clear? No? Is that okay. satisfactory? Does that cover everything? Yes. That's clear. Okay. Comment on the motion. Okay. I, um, I appreciate the motion and I, I certainly appreciate staff and uh, specifically the mayor's work on uh, meeting with lots of people on this. I still have concerns about it. Uh, the Nile Road piece, uh, some of the Lake Glad pieces, some of these lower connectors that we just don't know where development's going to go. And I think right now we're just guessing. Um, like I said, I, I do feel like the core is correct. We've got a lot of stuff done correctly. Uh, I, but my personal thoughts is we're not quite there yet. I have a question, Mr. Mark, um, based on the meetings that he, uh, Mr. Joyner, just mentioned. Um, we have come to some, I guess, gentlemen's agreements with some folks that had some concerns. Is, does there need to be some kind of language in here to protect those folks and make sure we've made some promises and I want to make sure that we well I mean we've made modifications to the plan itself based on some of those uh, based on some of the comments uh, so everything that we've done will be reflected like in the map yeah the, the map okay. you have 
Uh, I just wanted to speak to that to make absolutely sure we have all that on there. I don't want anyone yeah, to so feel like they. So we had in your report you had a, a copy and online. I can pull it up if you want. Both a copy that showed all the comments as well as a copy that had right. all the changes incorporated. So what right. we would be adopting would be that with all the changes that were recommended by the town engineer. So not every change that was. Right. proposed, but with those changes that were, came in those that were highlighted in the, with the green call outs incorporated into it based on those comments. Uh, so there were a number of changes that were made uh, based on comments we received. Uh, the, the biggest one was probably for the Anderson's tract, um, over in that area, uh, movement shifting a road to the north side of the bridge so that it didn't require a, an additional stream crossing. Um, and, and there were smaller ones where there was just slight alignment changes. Uh, one that was off of uh, Taylor Road was along along right. those lines. So there were those changes have all been incorporated into the plan. The other changes that we've made based on comments are more uh, built-in exceptions into the language. Things stating thing uh, there was language that said that if the plan called for a four-lane road and the uh, a development came in, but that development was going to be generating. Uh, a low threshold of traffic, less I think it was less than 10% of the amount of traffic that the mm -hmm. that that road would f handle at full build out uh, when the whole area developed. Then it was only responsible for building two of the four right. travel lanes. Okay. Um, so as well as the family subdivision. So there's kind of two different ways we've made changes, both in the actual map as well as some of the creating some exceptions for some of these circumstances for family subdivisions or where a bridge might be called for or where a four lane road might be called for for a small okay. development. I just want to make absolutely sure that everyone that came and spoke to us, their concerns are, if, if we, whatever we agreed upon is reflected in the language or on the map. Yes, anything that we agreed upon. So there okay. were some people that still had a concern. Okay, but, but, but what was mm -hmm. agreed upon is reflected in the map. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, any other comments? I have one. Yes. The last time we spoke about this, I had encouraged the citizens to reach out um, via phone call or email if there were any extra concerns. Um, and since that time, I, I have heard from three different individuals, and I appreciate that. Um, and anybody else that has any concerns after the vote, I'm, I'm you know, still willing to, to listen and hear. I, I would encourage that as well. Uh, this process has been going on for quite some time now. Um, and it's been grueling for all of us, and I'm sure town staff could speak to that. Uh, to piggyback on Commissioner Joyner's comments, there are a lot of good things on the map, and there are still some things that many of us, most of us, have reservations about one part or the other, I'm, sh I'm sure. Um, with that being said, this is development-driven, and any portion of it that is affecting a landowner positively or negatively that needs they feel it needs to be changed for whatever reason or the other they have the option to come before the board again with an amendment to the process so um, where we're not perfect on this I do feel it's time to make a decision um, we, we have been at this for a long time and um, I wish that there was a way to make everybody happy right off the bat. I don't know that there is. Um, I will say that, again, staff and the board has put their best foot, foot forward here and um, really taken into consideration everything that has been said. So, um, you know, with that. Thank you. All right, so we have a basically a motion to adopt the Collector Street Plan um, map and ordinance with the language that the attorney stated. So, um, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Let's see some hand your hands so I can know. Three. I'm all opposed. Two. Three to two. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number nine, question of citywide speed limit speed limit reduction. Gotcha. 
Madam Mayor, members of the board, um, for some time, questions uh, throughout the communities, various times of the year, various neighborhoods have come in and asked uh, about the ability to reduce the speed limit. Um, currently, our speed is um, in accordance with general statutes, 35 unless otherwise posted. And so um, that in most places, we do have um, a speed limit of 35 miles an hour. What we have looked at is, in considering the, um, the policy, is you know what are those areas? You know, is it something that's appropriate, um, and is it something that we want to allow uh, citizens to be able to have a process to come in and speak about and to make changes? We have talked about this um, in in the past been going on for quite some time from some of the neighborhoods particularly, um, a memo back in August as well as um, in September. What we've looked at uh, is some information that we've received from other communities, what we think that may or may not work, and in your uh, agenda packet is uh, laid out the a proposed or a draft policy. There are There is um, plenty of error area for change and amendments. Uh, this is something that um, you, know, you may say we want to allow the neighborhoods to get involved in reducing those or, or not at all. Um, but this is a process that's been laid out. And the policy does speak to reducing the speed to 25 miles an hour. Um, again, this is specific. Most of them, again, are 35. It talks about the definitions that we provide in there about the neighborhoods. And then there's the procedures for applying for a speed reduction. Um, in there, and again, this is where I think that it, uh, is somewhat uh, subjective, is that if someone wanted to uh, petition the town to have the speed reduced, it would take 20% uh, of the residents in an affected area. And uh, to be able to come to the town and say, we would like to see a change. Um, otherwise, if one individual or one resident came in, then it would be somewhat of a concern. Um, once petition is received, a speed reduction survey form is then mailed or hand delivered to all the residents in that area. Uh, and we would be looking at um, an area that's going to be uh, a section of highway or roadway, a minimum of 1,000 feet. Again, you want some consistency through there. Uh, you would not want to be going from a 35 to a 25 back to a 35 on the same roadway. So that's something that we would be looked at. If 75% of those residents would um, want to uh, go through that process of reducing it, then uh, we would ask that they get that back and those uh, surveys back to us in 21 days, um, and basically three, three weeks, and uh, that we'd be able to review it. Some of the things that we would look at then are the speeds, the volumes, the surrounding road networks that we have in place, uh, the neighborhood response, Budget considerations are always something that we have to take into place with just signage and adding that. This may be something that many neighborhoods in the town would choose to want to pursue, and we would have to be aware of what those budgetary constraints are. Uh, we would want to get, uh, again, our um, police, our fire, EMS, looking at the school system, the waste collectors, again, those types of things and those individuals together to look at what um, would be a feasible speed. Um, again, we'd want the speed limit to already be posted, 30 miles an hour or higher. Uh, traffic volumes, again, we want to look at neighborhood streets, 4,000 vehicles uh, per day. We would not want anything le uh, more than that. Not a primary route for emergency uh, services, the fire, um, ambulances, police. An application must not be, have been denied or become void within 60 months. Again, we would not want, um, if it was denied for some reason, and then to be coming back within a 12-month period of time. Um, staff, after they received that survey uh, results, and you had 75% that would wanted to reduce, um, to, to, to reduce the speed, we would look at a site study. And again, and, and again, look at the road uh, connectivity and the network and make sure that it meets the criteria. At that time, if it does meet all the criteria that is set forth, it would come before the board for action and approval. It would not be something that would be done at staff level. Again, and this would be on town maintained streets, not DOT. There is already a format for going through that that DOT has in place. If it's in the corporate limits, it would require not only DOT, but the approval of the town board if it was on a state maintained.
maintained um, road. And so we already have a, a process in place for that. Again, this is to give uh, those that are concerned and wanting to reduce the speed an avenue to do that uh, and to initiate that process on behalf of their neighborhood. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Connor? <clears throat> Uh, I, I do. Um, if if this neighborhood, um, I mean, and I'm just making sure, so it can be just a kind of a, a street or a grouping of homes. It doesn't have to be a set actual developed neighborhood. We would want to have in there a minimum of thousand feet or a section of roadway. Okay. We would not. We want to have it terminate with either stop signs or a stoplight or at some point where you would make that change. Okay. I just want to thank the, the manager and all the town staff for how much time they've put into this and mainly for putting up with me through this. Um, I'm, I know I'm the one that started this. Um, but I think it's, it's important to me and it's important to, to a lot of people to allow the people that live in an area um, to sort of have some control over their own living environment. And the best government is the government that's closest to home. And I think if a neighborhood... Um, we're not talking, you know, thoroughfare streets. We're not talking state roads. If if they feel safer with their neighborhood streets at 25, I got no problem with it. And I think they ought to be allowed to, to make that decision. And as long as the majority of them want to do that, I have no problem with it. Um, I think this policy is about as simple as it can be made. Um, I don't know if it could be any simpler. I, I asked. I, I don't know if it could be any simpler. Um, but I do appreciate all the time and effort that town staff's put into this. I think one of the things that questions that did come up and um, and uh, we had some good conversation on this is whether it should be residents versus property owners. Mm -hmm. um, residents are the ones that are living there on the street and, and putting up with the traffic and the volumes and the speeds. The other one is, um, you know, a if they are renting and they're not the property owner, then, um, you know, for them to have a say so in the speed reduction. Um, you know, I, I, so that was one of the, those items that we discussed, and it, right now it does read resident. And, and I'll just speak to that. The, the reason I push for it to be resident is, number one, I, I think it affects the people that live there more so than someone who just owns, owns the house. And, um, and secondly, that's sort of how voting in America goes. It doesn't matter who owns where you live. If you live there, you get to vote there. Um, you can own property all over the country, but you still only get to vote where you live, and that was sort of my that was sort of my feeling on that. But again, it comes back to allowing people that live there to uh, to have a say in in how their neighborhood was run. So I'm happy to see that we're looking into something. This has been a constant. <coughs> And, the, and some of the complaints continue to come. Yeah, but um, not sense, only speed, but, but also parking. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but we've talked about that today. So. Yeah, and and so I I would like you know the board again to read through this um, and to get feedback within this week if possible. Otherwise, we would be putting it on uh, the 28th for action, and uh, we would appreciate any feedback that we have because the more input we have, uh, it's just a better product at the end. Thank you. Can we get can we get some draft copies or, or printed out copies of what the actual application would look like? So what someone would be handed if they came to town hall to request this? Okay. Do you know what that is? Yeah, that's right. There. Okay. Well, I get the email copy, so I don't get hard copy. Just I need about five copies of that. Just a point of clarification, also, there, if I could. Mm -hmm. This is this is ultimately still. I think I'm reading between the lines. A, a board decision. Correct. And even if the petition or the, the request meets all the criteria in the policy, there may be a reason why the board thinks that a speed reduction or speed change there is not a good idea. That's correct. And the board retains the discretion to, to make the ultimate. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Planning board also. It goes through the planning board and then it's. Well, this is a policy, so it would not go to the planning board. Okay. It would just be a staff and engineers, if needed, 
um, looking at our technical, what I call the kind of a technical team of police, fire, rescue, those kinds of uh, schools, depending upon where it's located, and then come to the town board. But it would not go, we do not have it set up to go to the planning board. Okay. If, if, if the police, if emergency staff or the engineer or anyone had misgivings about it, then that would be forwarded along with the application to the town board. It wouldn't stop at staff level. That correct? is correct. That okay, is correct. thank you. Item number 10, a resolution designating agents to file applications with Federal Emergency Management Agency in North Carolina Division of Emergency Management on behalf of the Town of Wendell. Chief. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the board. I come before you tonight um, as part of our recovery efforts associated with Hurricane Matthew, uh, requesting you consider the approval of a resolution authorizing myself and Finance Bu Director Butch Kay to serve as the town's authorized agents for purposes of filing a request for public assistance with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, and the North Carolina Division of Emergency Management as a result of cost incurred during the town's response to Hurricane Matthew. As we all know, October 8th brought Hurricane Matthew to affect our town with over nine inches of water and high rain. As a result of that, a number of things occurred within our town. Power lines were down, widespread power outages, and a high volume of vegetative debris was created. Additionally, three of the five town facilities incurred some damage and one vehicle sustained some damage as a result of the storm. Uh, during the event, as well as immediately afterwards, Manager Piner and myself worked closely with Wake County Emergency Management to provide preliminary damage estimates and cost recovery estimates. Those were all aggregated or combined with other entities in Wake County. The entire damage across Wake County subsequently rose to a sufficient level to allow for the submittal of a reimbursement request to FEMA and emergency management. This submittal will allow the town to apply for reimbursement for overtime costs, debris costs, and unreimbursed deductibles associated with damage to facilities. Uh, actually, that last part just got approved yesterday, I believe, by FEMA. So we knew we were originally entitled to a debris removal recovery cost as well as emergency protective or salary cost above and beyond, as well as operation of equipment cost during that time. In order to do this, uh, and I've actually participated in this one time before when I was with the state, and it is somewhat a long navigating process to work through. But we have to collect a lot of data. Uh, we will be meeting with FEMA. In fact, uh, I believe we have uh, a contact with them going on this week as well. We'll be working with emergency management and submitting these cost recovery efforts directly to them. Uh, to do so requires a number of forms, a number of reimbursement things, and essentially what FEMA has found and the emergency managers have found it best to do is have the towns or affected governmental agencies have one, have two designated parties that are authorized to submit those paperwork documents, sign the approval forms, and essentially serves to speed the process along. Uh, in, in talking with Manager Piner, the decision was reached that that uh, Finance Director Kay and myself would be asked to consider for that resolution. And it is done in the form of a resolution. You have a copy of a blank one as, as part of your attachment, uh, just because that was how it was made available to us. Um, and so we'll be the ones, we've both attended the initial, initial kickoff meetings with FEMA and emergency management. Uh, and we're ready to move forward with collecting, and in fact, have already begun the collection of that data. So essentially what we're requesting you to consider is the resolution authorizing us to act on behalf of the town for this recovery effort. Does anybody have any questions for the chief? Do we have any idea how much that's totaled so far? Or are we still collecting that We're still collecting because it does include not only the removal of debris, uh, another large piece will be the... Uh, Compensation. Exactly. Cal calculating, getting rid of it, the haul-away fees, the composting fees, and all that. So um, it's... I mean, we know we're... I know buildings are probably around 15, um, and then uh, we don't know yet with the hauling and the debris. Right. And the time. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's going to be. I'm I'm comfortable right now projecting it'll definitely be above 10 because with the buildings you're entitled to and the vehicles you're entitled to effectively your deductible. Your insurance mm -hmm. covers, deductible. and we just get the deductible back. Yeah. So it's a it's a zero sum issue for us to recover those damages. 
Any other questions? So do I have a motion authorizing Police Chief Bill Carter and Finance Director Butch Kay to serve as Town of Wendell's authorized agents for purposes of filing a request for public assistance with FEMA and North Carolina Division of Emergency Management? So moved. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Uh, Aye. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Number 11, this is an update by Mr. Sid Baines on nomination of Jake May to the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. Y'all have had some pretty heady items on the agenda. This was light. This is all positive. All you've got to do is sit back and, and enjoy it. And hopefully at the end of this, you'll agree with me that the town needs to send letters of support uh, for a nomination to get one of our old prior residence, Mr. Jake May, uh, inducted into the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. Now, my interest in Mr. May went back many years. I moved to this town with my family when they moved back. Uh, I was only seven. We lived in an upstairs apartment in the home of Jake and Blanche May down on South Main Street until my family could acquire a lot and build a home. That house was a museum of baseball memorabilia. The den was full of balls and pictures, gloves and bats, and upstairs where we lived was an entrance into an attic, and I would play in there with the catcher's equipment and all sorts of things. I didn't understand the significance of all that at the time, but as I got to know Mr. May, uh, he would tell me stories about his baseball days. He didn't talk a lot about it. He was not uh, very braggadocious, but he was factual. He would tell me about things that happened. So I became interested in him, and about 20 years ago, I began a long process of trying to get him inducted into the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, Mr. May moved with his family to this town when he was 12. That was in 1904, 1907. And of course, Wendell was just in its infancy at that time. And one of the things that brought the town together was baseball. Baseball was so important that the town actually sponsored the Wendell Baseball Club. And at 17, Mr. May joined that club and played across the eastern part of the state against and with men much older than he. A few years later, uh, in 1917, he, brought his, he caught the attention of the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, they offered him a contract, and he signed a professional baseball contract. Now, Wendell always knew Mr. May as Jake May, but in professional baseball, he was known as Jakey May, or the Wee North Carolinian. He was called the Wee North Carolinian because he was only five feet eight inches tall. But he had an unbelievable curve. It was described as a jug handle curve because it had so much curve in it. When he was good, he was very, very good. Some days he wasn't good, but he was very, very good when he was good. He pitched for the Cardinals and also for some of the, the what we call today minor league teams. He pitched in the Pacific Coast League for the Vernon Angels. Now, on the Pacific Coast, there were no truly major league teams, but it was called a near major league. Uh, still exists today. The Vernon Angels now are the California Angels. But in 1922, Jake May set a record. He won 35 games and only lost nine. That record stands today. And today, the Pacific Coast League is still a major semi-pro or minor league. So that, that's quite an accomplishment. Uh, he caught the attention of, uh, also that year he did win the crown. He caught the attention of other professional baseball leagues or teams. The New York Yankees that year offered him a contract for $75,000. Now $75,000 doesn't sound much like much when you compare it to the, the contracts that Major League Baseball players get today. But to put that in perspective, two years prior to that, the Yankees had bought May, Babe Ruth's contract for only $100,000. So that's a pretty big deal when a man from Wendell is offered $75,000 uh, to a team that had just purchased Babe Ruth for $100,000. Uh, the Vernon Angels wouldn't release him. He was too valuable to him, so he stayed with them. In the offseason, he would pitch in, in Cuba. Uh, he pitched a no-hitter in Cuba, but he didn't like the food, and I think he kind of missed Wendell. He needed some time in the offseason back in Wendell, so he, he didn't stay in the Cuban League very long, but he continued in the professional uh, league here in this country. 1931 or 1924, 
Uh, he went to the Cincinnati Reds, where he did really well. He led the league that year in uh, saves and games finished. Uh, he also won 10 to 15 games in three or four consecutive years that year, uh, during that tenure. Uh, 1931, the Chicago Cubs came and bought his contract. 1932, the Chicago Cubs won the National League pennant and went on to the World Series. Uh, the New York Yankees won that series, but Mr. May pitched in two games. He pitched as a reliever in one game, and in the fourth game of the series, which was the final game of his career, uh, he was a losing pitcher, but he struck out Babe Ruth in two consecutive at-bats. And we have a letter from the, the umpire that called that game, and he, uh, he's very, very descriptive. Uh, a number of the words we couldn't use in public, but he was very descriptive about some of the comments that Babe Ruth had to say about Jake May's pitching. So he obviously uh, put him down pretty quickly there. Now, what I need for you to do, what I'm asking you for, to do, is, is help us get recognition for Mr. May. Mr. May represents baseball of the past, when baseball was truly America's favorite pastime. We know about a lot of the, the modern and current players. A lot of these modern and current players, even some that are in the Hall of Fame, don't have the stats and the records that Mr. May had. Uh, it'd be a great honor to him. It also would be a great honor to Wendell. It would be also a, a real reminder that the town that we love was built by people like Mr. May many years ago. And that's why we have Wendell today. That's why we have the spirit that we have. Uh, we can use this as a building block. Uh, this process is extremely competitive with the assistance of someone who's been in that hall for a number of years and on the board. Again, I've tried uh, in the past, and it's the kind of thing where you keep trying until one day it happens. This year, between 200 and 300 nominations came into the board. They've been pared down to 40. Mr. May is still in that 40. That's, that's a tremendous victory in itself. But let's get uh, Mr. May into the last eight or 10 that are actually selected and inducted into the hall. What I'm asking from you is to, to sign a letter of support for this nomination and send it to each one of the members on the board. This has been recommended to me by, uh, we've got four advocates on that board right now, and these, these people have recommended that we do that. Uh, we need to show the board how important this man is in the history of our town and how much pride we have in him today. You know, Wendell's still a baseball town. We, we take a great amount of pride in our little league teams and t-ball teams. But let me just run back through the process. I don't know who his competition is, but I know it must be stiff. But just keep in mind, again, the record that he accomplished, those records stand today, and uh, I'm proud of what he's done. I think you are too, and please go forward with these letters, and let's see if we can't get him in. I thank you for listening to me, and thank you in advance for support. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. We really appreciate it. And we'll get the letter signed tonight. Are the letters ready tonight? Yes. Okay. Y'all don't leave without signing all the letters. Get done into it tonight. Okay. Item number 12, committee reports. Let's see what we got tonight. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Lutz, you want to go first? I'll be happy to. Um, uh, I wasn't able to attend the Triangle J Council Governance meeting due to a work conflict. Um, uh, that day, they basically, uh, that night evening, went over some introduction of some new staff. Um, they talked about what the, uh, there's some group work done on what the uh, TCOG was doing to uh, making sure no local issues are being missed that they could help with. And then they also uh, discussed uh, relief efforts uh, for areas affected by Hurricane Matthew. Thank you. Commissioner Boyette from League of Municipalities. I had the pleasure of attending the um, League's annual meeting. It was held at the Raleigh Convention Center and that was um, uh, Monday night, the, the night of our last board meeting. That's why I wasn't here. Um, it was uh, very informative. They had a number of workshop and information sessions. Um, they had one on uh, community policing relations, and they had another one on um, re basically revitalizing your downtown um, with an eye towards walkability and improving uh, 
uh, property values in historic downtowns and things like that. Um, uh, they ran concurrently. I couldn't sit in on both. I thought they were both excellent topics, but I sat in on the one um, about uh, revitalizing downtowns, um, and the gentleman that gave the, uh, the talk about it is a very eclectic uh, gentleman, but he had a lot of good points, and, and um, it was interesting to see the towns that had basically um, sort of bought into the process of what happens when you stop designing your town for cars um, and you start designing it for people to walk around. Um, I, I realize that's a, a great thing to say on the night that we <laughs> finish up our transportation plan for cars. Um, and golf carts. And, and golf carts. Um, uh, but he had a number of good points um, that, that I would like to see incorporated. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, one of his big things was if, if you have a road that's more than, than the two lanes, you should take all the extra lanes other than two and turn them into pocket parks and the cars will go somewhere else, but people will walk everywhere. I thought that was great. I don't know that's exactly, I don't, I don't know that people would like the turn lane on Wendell Boulevard turned into a pocket park, but um, he, there were a number of good ideas. Um, um, and, I, and, and, and I would, I would like to see a lot of them, um, I, a lot of them implemented or at least discussed. Um, and so that's one of them. Uh, later on in the evening, um, uh, the Zebulon mayor, Mr. Matheny, was installed as the League of Municipalities president for the upcoming year uh, and had a dinner and lots of pomp and circumstance for that. Um, and uh, that's actually what, where I was during, during the meeting. And I had the, I had the honor of eating dinner with uh, Raleigh's city mayor. I was at my table, uh, our city manager. Um, was at my table as, as well as uh, a large delegation from Morrisville, uh, including Mr. Uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Rao, who's always a, a interesting and uh, yeah, uh, always interesting and thoughtful person. Um, and so it was a, it was a great time to network and talk with other people from Wake County and all over the state. Um, and I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to go and um, and to get that information and to network with those people. Uh, Commissioner Joyner, Wendell Fire Department, Board of Directors. The Fire Department met last week and we reviewed the lead, monthly ledger as well as going over the new health screening program uh, and finally finishing the audit. Uh, <clears throat> the only other update I'll have for Wendell Fire is that they currently have a brush truck and I believe Commissioner Boyd said earlier two personnel in Lake Lure area uh, working on that forest fire. So we have local guys out west so keep those in your thoughts. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Carroll, Technical Review Committee. At the last TRC uh, meeting, Wendell Falls Medical Office Building was approved uh, with conditions. They will start construction um, early 2017 and end in fall, the fall of 2017. It's going to be a two-story facility, 38,000 square feet, um, and the conditions were mostly related to the pedestrian um, walkways and things into the parking lot because it's a large building, big parking lot, and they were worried about uh, pedestrian safety. So, Thank you. Um, I attended the Triangle J Regional Mayors and County Chairs meeting. It was held in Clayton this time. Um, sometimes we meet out in RTP. Sometimes we travel around within our region. Um, this one was real interesting. It was a presentation on economic development efforts made in Johnston County, what they chose to do and why, what worked, what didn't, things like that, very much like, I think like maybe what uh, Commissioner Boyett has described. Um, it was interesting to hear their perspective and I learned a lot from them. It was nice to see that a lot of the things that they did that worked are things that we're doing here. So it gave me a little validation that we're on the right track here in Wendell. Um, Item number 13, Commissioner Reports. We'll start with uh, Commissioner Carroll. No comment. Commissioner Lutz. Uh, I just want to comment, uh, just thank you to the uh, town staff, uh, public works, and everyone, and then also to the chamber board uh, members and volunteers for the Harvest Festival. Uh, it was a beautiful weekend, and it, and it went off quite well. So much better than inside the community center. Yeah. 
And I would say I, I love it in the first week of November. I thought that was really nice. I thought it felt more like fall then. Yeah. That's all. Commissioner Myrick? Yes, I, I'll say the same thing. I thought the uh, Chamber of Commerce did a great job planning the Harvest Festival the first time, and then it got delayed, and you really couldn't tell that it, it wasn't the original date because they did a fantastic job. Thank you to the town staff as well. Also, uh, it's a couple days past, but Veterans Day was a few days ago, and I just want to publicly say thank you to all our veterans and their families. We have one on the board, and several were in the room tonight. Uh, also, I don't think we have a beaten until post Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Commissioner Boyette? With global warming, we might need to move Horace Festival permanently in November. I, I thought it was very festive. <laughs> it was nice and cool. Um, uh, I just want to say a quick word about the presidential election. Um, if you'd have told me that the presidential election would be over before our transportation plan, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, it's been a long process. Um, we've been working on it quite a long time. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Um, I, I just want to thank everybody that put in so much time on that. And, um, and again, it's, it's, it's a working document. Um, and and I, I, I think the town attorney said it all when he said it's a conceptual document. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's merely a starting point. Um, and it's a starting point that we'll be looking at again in five, six, Years, sometime, sometime soon. Sound good to you? Um, I, I would also like to thank all the veterans. Um, I spent my Veterans Day with a sick child, and so I didn't get to go out or do anything. Um, but um, I would like to say thank you to all the people that served in our military. Commissioner Joyner. So I echo the, the thoughts on the military um, and to put anyone's mind at ease about the transportation plan. Uh, Commissioner Boyette and I have found ourselves on the opposite side of the table yet again. We like to hold each other to our words, so we're looking forward to working together on getting the rest of it squared away, and I think we will um, get the rest of it squared away. Um, the election was, was tons of fun and, and all of that, but I have some more pressing, more important things I'd like to talk about tonight. Um, uh, pull pork turkey leg, the ribs, uh, fries from Tookies, pimento cheese from Tookies, chicken salad from Tookies, uh, french fries. Um, there may have been more than one funnel cake. Um, sweet tea from the big stand, um, and then various cookies that I'm not exactly sure where they came from. Those are just some of the items. Uh, Alton was helping me and guiding me to different locations that he thought may be best, but I did my best to eat my way through the Harvest Festival this year, uh, two days. It was an amazing uh, culinary experience as well as just having fun otherwise, um, but I, I'll be posting a full review of, of my culinary experiences in the future. If you didn't have seafood, you missed out. Shrimp and flounder. Alton. <laughs> I didn't know. Well, look forward to hearing about the rest. Uh, I wanted to also, I know we all wear it out, but the Harvest Festival really was great. I want to thank the town staff for all their work that they did. I think sometimes they get lost in the shuffle and things like this happen. People just say, well, the town can just do this, and there's more to it than that, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate. I saw them out there. I saw Alton picking up trash numerous times. I've seen him fighting bees in the years past. I don't think we had bees this year, but I've seen that. The manager walked by the float so we could throw candy at everybody's children. We all really, um, they all worked really hard, and I appreciate that. The, the police chief, thank you for all your hard work on that. I really appreciate it. It was great. Um, I also want to talk about the trick-or-treat trail. I don't think we've um, talked about that. We had... I think the number I heard was 1,997 children, so we're right at 2,000 children. And by the time it was over, I, um, I was exhausted, I'll be very honest, but it was really, really fun. And I look forward to participating again next year. And if you haven't ever been, you really should go, because it's a lot of, of fun. Um, I was also invited this week to view and judge the Reflections Art Contest at Lake Meyer Elementary School, which I did. It was a lot of fun. I always enjoy visiting schools and doing things like that. And I was asked tonight to remind everybody that the Appearance Commission has the uh, puzzle of 
our what has become our town mascot, the worm for sale for ten dollars. It's a thirty-five piece puzzle. It's available at the town hall, and the proceeds go for public art projects. And it's a great Christmas gift. And we would love for every child in Wendell to have one. So please stop by and get the puzzle. Um, also, the Christmas decorating contest applications are due by December 9th. That's not too far away. So um, you can get those on the town website and the town hall. And I wanted to ask real quickly about the December 2nd event um, that's coming up because I, I didn't want to wait until the last minute. Can we get just a real quick little update about what's going to happen December 2nd that night? Oh, yes. We're, we're very excited. We've been working on it. Um, uh, music will start about 5 o'clock. We'll have um, the Wendell Middle School mm -hmm. um, band will be here to play. Um, this year also we will have Southeastern Baptist Seminary. Their choir will be here. That's a new addition. We're excited about that. Mrs. Falls will be joining Santa this year uh, at 6 o'clock at the gazebo. Uh, the trolley ride start, that was a big hit last year. We'll start at 5.30, run into 9.30. The uh, light show, Don Williams' light show that he's working on diligently since 1st of October will be, um, it will start before then, but again, it will be a big event that, that night as well. So we're uh, working with the businesses, getting them, uh, talking to them, staying open. Staff's been great, staying in contact with them, as well as some of the empty stores, uh, looking at having kind of pop-up shops in those. Also, other businesses that are open or uh, making additions and um, having other events in there or selling items or giving uh, businesses an opportunity to have a place to come. So um, we're real excited about everything that we've got coming so far, and we think it's going to be a really exciting event in addition to... Um, we will be having wood carving, possibly ice carving, uh, question, questionable there. Uh, also, Mr. Leon Cobb, that so many people know, he will be out there uh, with his um, blacksmithing um, skills and, and making things out there at the same time. So it's a lot of activities, and it's going to be real important. Uh, East Wake, I mean, uh, Wendell, uh Middle uh, Methodist Church will be having their cookie walk, so we're going to be able to take the trolley rides up there, and in addition, uh, Wendell Baptist has their music night that night at the same time, so you can ride the trolley from downtown at the square up to Wendell Boulevard uh, to visit both churches, so it's going to be fun, fun evening. I, I would like to also, because of the traffic, talk about maybe closing a section of street um, South Cypress between 2nd and 3rd that one block, I think, for safety. Um, I think it would be safer if there's not cars parked on the road and then children wandering and that kind of thing. I think we need, you know, it's not that much parking. There's plenty of parking behind Agave, so it's not going to inconvenience people. And I think it will um, certainly make for a safer event for the public. So can we look into that, please? All right, thank you. And with that... I believe we need a motion to go into closed session. I'll make a motion pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11A6 that we go into closed session to consider a personnel matter. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Closed session. Give an option. <laughs>
they still don't. Would that allow the other person? Stop it though and let it be a little bit no. come back. I don't so that, so why does someone have to concede anyway? He'll probably edit it. Oh, they don't really have to. Anyway, I'll edit it. So either way. Okay. That's what I'll do. So that's what I'll do. I'll try and edit it and cut it out. Okay. And I'll tell him that well, go ahead and kill it. You know, okay. Yeah. And then pick it back up. You know, when it's real right, it's just the orange, the planet. But when it's those paid professional ones, it does. Okay. If that's all the motion's going to be, I've actually been the, the recording. Um, and whatever we do, typically do. Pleasure. No, I, I'm whatever everybody. I'm either way. Regina. Come on. Okay, push your head. Remember that? Huh? <laughs> push your head. Do you just think about Regina? God, God, it's crappy to say to me. You're just moving. I'm just like. Please let me go home.